Hey, this is Marcus again, and this is not so much of a review as just a quick answer to a question that everyone seems to have, and rightfully so, about this lens, which is the Olympus 300 millimeter f4 lens. Uh, it recently got some attention because Tony Northrup did a review on it, comparing it to a Nikon 600 millimeter prime lens, and basically saying uh, it's not as sharp, which it probably isn't. But I did want to show, after having shot with this uh, lens for close to a year now, uh, what kind of results you can expect to get in some more real-world tests. Uh, I think Tony's review is probably fine, especially since uh, he was taking side-by-side -side images of the same subject. But I also think it can help to, uh, to see how the lens performs in the real world. So with that said, uh, this will not be a comparison to the 600 millimeter because I've never shot with it. Um, maybe, if anything, it would be a comparison to the Panasonic uh, 100 to 400 millimeter f4 to 5.6, which I have also uh, shot quite a bit with, and, and I do feel like the Olympus lens is, is quite a bit better. So really, all I'm going to do for this part is just uh, share my screen and step through some photos that I've taken. These are almost all bird pictures, since that's uh, what I'm into. Uh, these are, so these are photos I've taken over the last several months with the Olympus, and let's just see how they look. Um, and you can compare them to, to your own results. Okay, so this first one is a tree swallow, and most of these are cropped, at least to some extent, uh, given the subject. But uh, I think you'll still get a decent idea for what to expect. And I have a little... Uh, tab open and preview on the Mac to show the, the settings. And like you can see, this one was shot at ISO 1600. So if anything, it's probably slightly grainy because of that. This is a tree swallow. Um, and then let's just go here. Again, the tree swallow also shot at fairly high ISO 1250. Um, and this one actually did not turn out as sharp as I would have liked. And I think that the reason for that is because these four birds, the baby birds, are uh, not all in the same focal plane. So you can see the one closest, actually the two closest are pretty sharp and then the focus starts to fall off in the back. But overall, uh, not too bad, especially if you look. Mm -hmm. You can see actually some noise if I zoom in that much, but you, you can see at least uh, zoomed out to 100%, it's not too bad. Here's a song sparrow, obviously with the a mosquito or something in its mouth. Um, and then you get some pretty good feather detail here. Uh, a bit of noise. And I'm shooting, I will say all these images are shot with the Panasonic Lumix G9, which is what I'm filming this video on too. I'll see this was shot at ISO 2500. So given the ISO, I think this is pretty good performance. Here's a, a common yellow throat, again with a bug in its mouth. And you get, from, from what I feel, like pretty good detail around the eyes. The background separation is good. There was not a ton of distance behind it. It was a decent amount. Uh, but shooting at, let's see, did this have a teleconverter on it? Yes, it did have the 1.4x teleconverter, um, which I usually shoot with. So that would mean that the aperture value was at uh, f5.6 which will be the equivalent depth of field on a full frame camera to about f11. So not bad, I would say. Okay, I had to pause for a minute because the hard drive filled up. Um, so we're gonna move on from the, the yellow throat. Next is this uh, barn swallow. This was taken again at ISO 6400. Uh, 300 millimeters with that teleconverter on and even at that high ISO you get pretty good detail around the eye and here on the, the forehead a lot of the image faded out of focus but what you do see I feel like not bad um, here's a white crown sparrow I'm just going to kind of move through these unless there's something to say here is a Wilson's warbler again ISO 3200 apparently I was shooting dark Okay, another minor interruption. Let's see this next one. It's another Wilson's Warbler. Got an American Goldfinch. Uh, again, ISO 
Oh, 400 on this one, but also with the teleconverter. Again, most of these do have the teleconverter. I don't find that it affects the sharpness very much at all. So Robin bathing. This is a Savannah Sparrow. Again, you can zoom in and see that the the level of detail I feel is I feel very repetitive saying it, but it's pretty good. Um, here is an Anna's Hummingbird. I think the next one is the same. This is uh, the non cropped version, I believe. It's a bit of noise on there, but good details in the feather. A um, gray, I'm losing the name, blue gray gnat catcher. They don't have those here in Washington, but this is one I got down in Arizona. This is a pronghorn antelope. Pretty Good detail on that. We'll wait for preview to load it. There it is. Little ground squirrel. I'm going to skip him. This one's a pretty heavy crop, so I'm going to skip that. This was more just because I don't have any other photos of the species. I wanted to keep it. This is a bobcat. This was shot during midday, but when a bobcat appears, you just shoot it whatever the time of day it is. And my switch over here, here's a belted kingfisher. And this may have actually been, let me make sure it was this, and this was with this lens. And then, going this way, here's a great blue heron in flight. So ISO 100, what's the shutter speed on this one? It's 1 640th of a second. So that's where that, I think, image stabilization comes into play. And it is a big bird, so you don't need quite as much shutter speed. I don't actually like this one uh, here. I'm not sure why it's not as sharp. It, it, you just, anyway, I'm gonna skip it. Here's a kill deer. Um, zoom in some on the eye to, to see the sharpness. Great blue heron. Uh, this is an ISO 2000 without the teleconverter. Uh, it's pretty sharp. I, a little more noise though than I would expect, even at ISO 2000. Same here, ISO 2500. Um, again, this one is not quite as sharp, but I think that's mostly due to my cropping. Brant. And you can see like the detail on the, the, the back is pretty good. Um, What's the ISO on this? ISO 1600. I'm always shooting a high ISO, aren't I? Here's American Wigeon, a bald eagle. This is not quite as sharp either. That's probably another cropped image. Cropped. This is just some. I've been doing. I've been at this for a little more than a year, um, and so some of what you're seeing is just my lack of ability any more than the lens. I think you've seen some pretty good examples of when the lens does show a sharp image, and if it can do it in those circumstances, like here, um, I think you can get good results if you're a better photographer than I am. Some shorebirds. So. That's my sort of review. You know, the depth of field is still going to be an issue uh, for better or for worse. You will have twice the depth of field at the same aperture, uh, but the lightness and portability of the lens is enough to where I'm throwing this in my backpack, taking it to work on the off chance that I get to go somewhere and shoot after work. And uh, the price, you know, again, it's around 2000 US dollars compared to five, six times that for a 600 millimeter prime. And the results are uh, what you've seen here. So you, you can determine uh, if you think it's worth it based on that. And that is my sort of review. And I realize I did not show, I don't think any images from this 100 to 400, which maybe I'll do at some point, or you can look on my um, Instagram or Flickr, both of which are Marcus Birding. Um, and find some examples of those. I'm just going to stop this screen recording. There, find some examples of images shot with this lens there. Uh, but I will say at the 400 millimeter range, it is not nearly as sharp as the Olympus 300 millimeter. Uh, up to from about one to 300 millimeters, 
it's, it's pretty sharp. It's still not, it's noticeably not as sharp as the Olympus, but again, half the price uh, and, and actually is much more portable. Like what you're seeing here is the lens with the lens cap, which is a little tougher to remove. So I always just leave it on, it's not just on, but extended. And then here's the uh, 300 millimeter back up some with uh, the teleconverter and the lens cap is, is not extended. So it's quite a bit bigger, decent amount heavier. It's still, they both still fit in my photography backpack, uh, which is relatively small, even both at the same time with my body and a couple other lenses. Uh, but this this 100 to 400 is significantly more portable. So hopefully that's uh, a, a help in your decision. And uh, again, thanks for watching.